Greetings and welcome to Union Street Hoops, a podcast dedicated to Valparaiso basketball and the Missouri Valley Conference. I am your host, Paul Oren. You can find me on Twitter at NWI Oren, and you can find Union Street Hoops on Spotify, SoundCloud, NWI.com, Apple Pods, Google Pods, all over the place. We got a big one today. We're going to talk about the mascot change. I apologize for not doing a lot of these podcasts this year. Look, it's been a weird year. There's no other way to say it. I can't even tell you how many times I've recorded episodes and then just realized that they weren't very good or, um, you know, there was the night that Valpo beat Bradley in double overtime and I recorded a 45-minute long, um, you know, episode afterwards just basically talking about how great it was to be in the gym for a game like that and how I wish all the fans were there. I listened back to it the next morning as I was going to hit publish and I thought, you idiot, you sound like a buffoon, you're disingenuous, you're telling people you wish they were at the Ark, and it just kind of came off as, I don't know, privileged or whatever. I just thought it was, just thought it wasn't very good, and at the end of it, I'd probably just alienate you all, and and so I'm going to cash in all those, I'm going to alienate you chips for this episode right here on Union Street Hoops, and I thank you for for joining. Um, You know, I also, I I, I recorded one uh, about Nick Robinson that I may share later on down the line about the whole story about what happened with Nick, and uh, and uh, the the inner workings of the the journalism aspect of telling that story, uh, which I think is interesting. I think you, I mean, you all know what happened with Nick. You've read the letter and all of that. Um, but the uh, the story behind the story is is kind of fascinating. And and I think maybe after the season, I might tell that story, give it a little bit of distance, and and uh, and, and see. I, I just don't think it's very important at the moment. Although it's a it's an interesting story, I'll tell you that much. So uh, um, it'd be some good summer content. We'll put it that way. Um, you know, the mascot thing, let's talk about it. And and I got two great interviews that are going to come up. And and I'll be honest with you, I recorded uh, 50 minutes of me talking earlier tonight. And I just, it, it, it didn't it didn't flow right. Um, and, and so I'm going to shorten that by about half. And um, and and then you're going to hear from Chris Sarah and Kyle Padgett, two VU football, former VU football players that have got two different kind of takes about the mascot. And, uh, and it's been a struggle, I got to tell you. It's been a struggle t- trying to tell the story over the last week because I'm trying to tell every, get everybody's voice out there. But um, some people want to talk, some people don't. You know, in the, in the day that this all went down, that Thursday, February 10th, uh, there were a lot of people that I reached out to, excuse me, February 11th, there were a lot of people that I reached out to that were very vocal on social media who, quite frankly, didn't want to talk and they didn't maybe want to have their name attached to the newspaper, or maybe, maybe you know, I'm I'm fake news or whatever. I have no idea, right? Um, all I can do is ask. And uh, and I'll be honest with you, the first article that I wrote, I you know, I interviewed a handful of uh, former athletes. I interviewed Adam Amin, who I thought had some really good things to say. And I would tell you to go back on nwi.com and find that article. And and uh, I'm not going to read the whole thing to you now. Um, I will read to you in a second, but I won't read that. Um, Erica Fender, and now Erica Perkle, a golfer at Valpo. I talked to her. She was fired up about it a little bit. But again, not not over the top. And then uh, the next day, I got a tweet from Dot Nectarline, the longtime official scorer for the men's basketball team. And matter of fact, one of my professors in grad school taught me one of the best classes I've ever taken, um, basically a class about getting old and dying. I thought it was an amazing class, and I learned a lot from her, and, and Dot is a is a friend and a mentor and, and, and someone who I've had the pleasure to take some uh, road trips with. And, um, and, and, and Dot was upset with me and she, she's very passionate about the Crusader nickname. And she thought that I didn't interview enough people that were passionate about the Crusader nickname. So you're going to see the story in Wednesday, November, February 17th newspaper. And the first quotes right up there are, are Dot Nectar line. And, uh, that's maybe not altogether an accident. So I appreciate Dot and appreciate what she had to say. So um, I've, I've covered this already. I did an episode um, with Sammy Corbotley last summer called The Mascot Episode, which touched on my evolution a little bit of, of the thoughts on the Crusader mascot. And, uh, and you know, I, I went from a place when I was 20 and younger and thought you know, that people were idiots who wanted to change the name and as I've gotten older, I, I I don't think people who want to change the name are idiots anymore, and I don't think people who want to keep the name are idiots either. I think I'm right in the middle on this, and 
that's uh, that's a tough place to be because I see both sides of the of this. Um, I don't think people that use the Crusader nickname are malicious. I, I just don't. You're going to hear from Kyle Paget later on, who's going to tell you that he's tired of being told what he should think or what he feels or what the words he says mean. And I do think that there is understanding of that. I also think that words matter and and some of these words are intolerant. Now, there is a major question about who gets ownership of this word. Is it the athletes? Is it the non-athletes? Is it everybody? I mean, Mark LaBarba, the athletic director, he told me on a podcast of Union Street Hoops in 2018 that the, the nickname represents the broad community of the university, not just athletics. And he circled back and said that when I talked last week, that the name Crusaders is not necessarily a name that is just owned by the athletes. I think athletes feel a bit different about that. They put it on their chest. And I talked to Rob Giancola, a wide receiver from Valpo, who who said, um, you know, he, he from Whiting, Originally, he was a—he's in the Hall of Fame, the Valpo Athletics Hall of Fame. I talked to him, and and I said, "What do you think?" And and he said, "It um, that that name matters to the athletes. When you graduate, you don't put Crusaders on your resume. You put Valparaiso University." He said, "There are different levels of representation. That's the way that he sees it." I asked another football player, and and we traded messages back and forth on Twitter. I, I don't think he would mind if I shared his name, but. He didn't, we didn't talk about that, so I'm not going to give his name, but it's a recent football player, that, but the words matter the most. He said uh, he, he personally didn't agree with the change. Speaking for most athletes, that Crusader name means a lot more than any regular student may be able to comprehend. That's not to say that regular students don't take as much pride or feel the same way I do, but for the majority, you can draw your own conclusions from the obvious lack of attendance at sporting events. Then he went on to say, I understand why people want it changed. Looking back on it, the Crusaders were not good dudes, definitely not someone you want to idolize unless they stood for a different cause. Then he said this, and I think this is huge, and this is something that got overlooked. I would love to keep the name and help change its meaning, but we're definitely past that point. I'm excited to see what the new name will be and hope no one gets on my ass about rocking the same Crusader gear I was given. Also, it's about damn time we get some new colors. I'm feeling like a black, white, and gold similar to the University of Central Florida. Much easier, too, with the logo. Could be the Knights. thought that was a a good take there. Um, You look, I want to bring in Chris. I want to bring in Kyle. I I could talk for a long time. I feel like I would talk myself in circles. So there's a couple bullet points I want to make, and then I'll bring in Chris and I'll bring in Kyle. Number one, the university, I think, is does have a problem here because I think there was a lack of, of transparency here. Um, they did a survey. The only thing the university has released about this survey is that almost 80% of people uh, recognize themselves as being from Valpo and only 2.5% recognize themselves as Crusaders in the most dominant messaging that they had. That's the only data that they've released from this survey that they said that 7,700 people have taken. I have heard from so many different people who tell me that they did not get the survey. Okay, whose pro- who's fault is that? Is that the university's fault for not reaching out to you? Or is that your fault for not updating your email address or checking your email or taking the survey? Yada, 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 yada. I am not smart enough to know whose fault that is. I do think the university should have done more. You've got Zoom. Open it up to to do a Zoom conversation with all with all the athletes. Do a Zoom conversation with all the Greeks. Do a Zoom conversation with all of the theater students. And although I don't know if you can do that now, whatever. So I just I feel like this conversation maybe didn't happen the way that it should. Although this conversation has been going on for a long time. So if you were passionate about the Crusader nickname and you never said anything about it. I feel like that, again, I feel like this this has been on the horizon for a while. Valpo stopped using the Crusader nickname in their stories in 2018. For two plus years, Valpo has not been doing this. And that brings me to the next point. People that are critical of, of the interim president, Colette Irwin, not. First of all, just throwing around that interim president term like she just got off the Amtrak 
last week and is here for 20 minutes and is leaving. She's been on the board of directors since 2009. I've never met her before. That's fine. So don't think that I'm trying to, to stand up for like a friend here. I don't know her at all. Um, but I've got no reason to think that she's going rogue. She didn't make this decision on her own. You know, like she's been on the board of directors since 2009. She's, she's, I imagine did this with the full support, if not the majority support of the board of directors, right? And then if you want to attack the student body president, and I see many of you doing so on Twitter, which I think is, you know, uh, whatever. Um, it's ridiculous. Some of the things that she's had to take and, and put up with, and she's got thick skin. And I just, I think, look, Caitlin Steinheiser, the student body president, while if I'm the university, I don't think I would have trotted her out for the video like they did. I thought that was kind of, I just thought that was a little, a little much. Um, and there's a chance in the future here, I may sit down with Caitlin and, and, and have a conversation with her um, on this podcast to, uh, to, to get her thoughts on this a little bit. But I, I, she was beginning her or finishing up her freshman year, beginning her sophomore year when the university decided to roll back the use of the term crusader. So people who are pointing at her as the one that did this, that she had an ax to grind or an agenda or anything like that, like the university's been doing this for a while. It didn't start when Heckler left and Irwin not came in and it didn't start when the university shut down because of a pandemic and people thought that, oh, let's try to slide as much under the radar as we can. People who are attacking those two individuals, Erwin Knott and, and Steinheiser, I feel like it's trying to blame somebody for a bigger conversation. So in the words of, of today's student, miss me with that energy. It's just not my thing. Because the university had rolled back the use of the Crusader nickname long before those two we're sitting in the chairs that they're sitting in right now. It's not to say that they didn't help get to the finish line or anything like that, but it, 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 to think that those two were the ones, and I, and, and I say that because I'm seeing the vitriol. People are firing at them on message boards and Twitter and stuff like that. This is bigger than two individuals. This is much bigger than two individuals. That's my thought. That's my, I'm, I'm not defending. I'm not doing anything other than saying it's bigger than two individuals. Okay. Third point that I want to make here. Uh, people are, are pointing to cancel culture as the reason why this happened. Uh, Dot Nectarline is quoted in the Northwest Indiana Times on February 17th, the story that, that I wrote. Quoted is, is calling it cancel culture. Rob G. and Cola mentioned cancel culture. Uh, I think you're going to hear from Kyle Paget later on today, or Chris Sarah. They're both going to bring up, I think, the terms cancel culture. I've heard people say cancel culture so much over the last week. I, okay, fine. Fine. If, if that's where you need to be to blame it on this generation of college student and yada, 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 if that's what helps you get through this, fine. Cancel culture did not start in 2020. Cancel culture did not start in 2016 when Donald Trump took office. It didn't start in 2008 when Barack Obama took office. Cancel culture, I don't even know. I mean, I know what it is, but the fact that people are pointing at this, and now it's time for a history lesson for me. And if I'm going to sound like I'm going to preach, keep in mind that I am the son of a Methodist pastor. And if I'm going to preach about history, keep in mind that that Methodist pastor was also a Civil War reenactor. I love history. I love the study of where we've been so we can figure out where we're going. I think that's from Back to the Future or Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. I'm not sure. But when my editor asked me uh, late last week, early this week, to expand the research on this, that we, we didn't feel like we did a good enough job in that first article. We wanted to follow up. The first thing I did was I went back to the Torch archives to read about what happened in 1941 when Valpo moved away from the Yulon and adopted the Crusader. Now, they didn't adopt the Crusader till 1942. It took 10 months after they got rid of the Yulon to adopt the Crusader. And matter of fact, when they moved away from the Yulon, 
they moved away from it first as the name of the campus yearbook, and then they moved into it or moved away from it in terms of the uh, the campus a- athletic teams. Yulon was a term that they had here at the university that they moved away from because it was connected to German and Nazi causes. Okay, so there were a lot of people on the campus who disagreed that it was connected to German or Nazi causes. They didn't like that insinuation. So one group felt, felt offended by a name and the other group didn't. And guess what? They ended up changing the name. So if you're going to point to cancel culture, you have to know that a nickname on Valpo's campus got canceled 80 years ago. So I want to, before we bring in Chris and before we bring in Kyle, I want to do something really quick. I went back to a torch issue from January, uh, it was January 16th, 1941. And there is a column here. Here are the pro and con points of changing the yearbook's name. Again, mind you, the yearbook's name is Yulon and the athletic teams were also the Yulons. And this was a conversation that, that spread between both. So it wasn't just the yearbook they were talking about. And so what happened was uh, they did, they did a, uh, a chapel discussion. They had an entire student body come to the chapel, and they had a big discussion. And there was a gentleman by the name of Lee Rose, who was a senior law student, and Earl DeWald, who was also a senior law student, and they battled back and forth. They debated each other. They each gave five-minute arguments. And then afterward, they, they, they did the pros and cons, and then the students voted. They voted the next day and they voted and they got rid of the Yulon. Earl DeWald reads, uh, his, here's his pro. I'm going to read you some of this. I hate to break tradition, especially a tradition that has meant much to the campus as much as anyone, but in the matter at hand, the question is whether the university will benefit more by the maintenance of the tradition or in the breaking of it. I believe that we stand to gain much by breaking the tradition that we stand to lose a great deal by maintaining it. So his point is interesting because I had a a former football player on my Facebook page tell me that the university should keep the nickname Crusader because of tradition. Well, Valpo's got a tradition of changing its nicknames too. I mean, they've, they've been the Yulons, they've been the Hilltoppers, they've been the Dune Hawks. Uh, the Dunes Hawks, I think, for a minute there. They've been a bunch of different things. They've, they've had a tradition of changing the nickname, especially in the times of political unrest a little bit or times of, uh, of this. So um, that, to me, is interesting that this was a conversation in 1941 about changing the nickname and, and then talking about tradition because it's the same conversation that's being done right now. Uh, DeWald goes on to talk about that uh, he hopes that if they do change the name, they do it quietly and they don't have to flaunt it and they don't have to act patriotic by doing it. They just do it. And, uh, man, that flies in the face of so much of what we've seen out of Washington. Um, you know, people who, who do something and then ask for credit for it all the time. But uh, I thought this was – I just thought this was interesting. Okay, uh, I probably lost 50 percent of you right there. All right, here's the con. Here's Lee Rose, and I think this is great. I'm going to read you a lot of this because, um, like I said, I'm on, I'm on both sides, and, and I, I think there's value to both sides. Here's Lee Rose. A very highly respected man on this campus once told me that every time you do the expedient thing rather than the right thing, you get caught. I think we might apply his warning in this matter of changing the name of the Yulon. It is, without a doubt, the expedient thing to pamper and humor the unthinking people who might draw ridiculous conclusions from the name of the yearbook. Uh, then he goes on to make a, a, a World War I analogy. But if people are determined to believe something, no amount of placating can keep them from it. If they can't jump on the name of the yearbook, they will find something else to seize upon. Well, that sounds like a criticism of cancel culture right there. In 1941, guys, again, this is my point. This is not new. And whether it's right, whether it's wrong, any of that stuff, fine. But this constant trashing of today's college students, which is probably often done by people who never get to know the current generation of college students, I just, I, I, it's, it's maddening to me. I tweeted about this last week. 
this idea that we're going to throw this current crop of college students under the bus for not being able to cope or not being able to handle things or whatever, like this is the first time it's ever happened. Guys, 20 years ago, they were talking about changing the Crusader name. 80 years ago, they were talking about changing the Yulon name. And they were, and it says right here, if they can't jump on the name of the yearbook, they will find something else to seize upon. Whether that's right, wrong, or whatever, it's always been a thing. So stop saying it's just college students today. People have been doing this forever. Okay, let's go back to uh, Lee Rose. Why do I consider it the right thing to keep the present name? There are many good reasons. In the first place, a great deal of sentiment has grown up around the name. Okay. Uh, In the second place, we had the name before Hitler had anything to say in Germany. Well, I don't think you can say that about the Crusader. In the third place, I dislike the idea of yielding any point to people who are motivated by an un-American spirit of intolerance and bigotry. Well, it kind of falls in line on both points here. In the fourth place, I can see no re- more reason why Americans of German descent should be ashamed of the glories of the Germany uh, than uh, that was than why Americans of England descent should be ashamed of the glories of their forebears. Okay, let's go on. It seems to me that if we change the name under the present circumstances, we will be yielding to every base emotion that college people should despise, unjustified suspicion, intolerance, bigotry, and this should also be borne in mind. The same people who might accuse us of being pro-German if we keep the name will accuse us of trying to cover up our pro-Germanism if we change the name. It isn't so much our acts as their preconceived ideas that will determine their feelings towards us. We know what we believe. We know that we are as truly American as any group of college people in the country, perhaps more so because we have never tolerated any such doubtful organizations, uh, blah, 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 blah. No man has the right to accuse any of us of loyalty to any institutions except those which our fathers voluntarily pledged allegiance after they had defined the tyranny of the German princes. We might as well reiterate. Reiterate Horace's classic words: "He who is upright, kind, and free from error need not the sin, or need not the aid. Excuse me, need not the aid of arms of men to guard him. Sadly, he moves a child to guilty terrors, strong in his virtue." Okay, it's good stuff there. Um, I love this. We know what we believe, and I say that because I I have used the name Crusaders for a long time. I, I said this twenty years ago that I thought Crusaders was something different than murdering people in the Crusades. Martin Luther King Jr. was a crusader. John F. Kennedy was a crusader. Barack Obama was a crusader. I'm sure some people feel that Donald Trump was a crusader. Whatever. I don't know. Um, My point is, is that there are crusaders everywhere. I know what I believe when I say that term. Other people might hear things differently. And so this is, again, the question. What, What does symbolism mean? This is what Adam Amin brought up to me when we were talking. How much do symbols matter? And that becomes a big question. How much do symbols matter? And who do they matter to? Who should they matter to? Should symbols matter more to the football player who straps it up every week and goes out there and doesn't, you know, and has to pay to go to the university as a non-scholarship athlete? Should it matter more to that person than it should to be to the scholarship athlete? When I talked to Matt Lodick last week, and he told me that he talked to the Valpo basketball team, and some of those guys said that they didn't even know that the Valpo was the Crusaders when they signed up to go to school. Should it matter more to the football players who sing the fight song after every game than the baseball team that may never have sung the fight song? I don't know if they do or not, right? Should that matter more to them? Should it matter more to the football players than it should to the non-student athletes? Or should it matter more to the non-student athletes who don't really get to control it at all? They don't get to go out and represent the crusader on the field like everybody else does. I don't know. I think this is, I think these are great questions. Who has the right to be offended by this nickname? Who doesn't have the right? Well, I think everyone's got the right, but there are people out there who will tell you that not everybody does. There are people who will tell you that if you didn't play for this or do that or whatever, that you don't have the right. I don't know. I just don't know. I'm going to bring in. Uh, I'm going to bring in Chris Sarah to bring in Kyle Paget right now because I think that their insight into this is going to be pretty good. I think you'll appreciate and, and enjoy hearing from them. You're going to hear two different sides, and I think especially with Kyle, you're going to hear the pain of somebody who feels like maybe his voice was uh, was drowned out a bit but also the pain of somebody who loves this university and doesn't want to see see people lose the touch of it. Here are Chris Sarah and Kyle Padgett 
And I thank you very much for listening to Union Street Hoops. I'll be back again next week with more of a follow-up on this, with some more details. And uh, hey, Valpo Basketball is playing too, getting closer to Arch Madness. And obviously that's always a good time. So um, thank you again very much. Here is Chris Sarah. Here is Kyle Padgett. Thanks for listening to Union Street Hoops. Thrilled to be joined right now by Valparaiso alum, Chris Serra. Chris, you played football at Valpo for, uh, for, for many years. Um, and uh, you also, you graduated in 2009. You now have uh, a career we'll get into in a little bit. But uh, Chris, you'd reached out to me about this whole thing. Um, you're one of several people we're talking to today on the podcast about the Crusader mascot and the change and all of that. Um, you know, before we get into anything specific, just first thoughts when you see the news that this is happening. You know, my first thoughts are, I'm happy about it. Um, I got this survey about a month ago in my email, and I did some research as soon as I got that email, and I saw that Valpo was one of four schools, four universities nationally, at least the data that I saw that, that still had the Crusader mascot, one of two Division I, and the only one that was having that imagery shown. And I said to myself, if Valpo is the institution that I know, we should be moving with the times. And so I'm, I'm quite frankly, my first impression are, I'm glad um, and not to be long winded here, but I'm also glad because the conversation is no longer now about is our mascot racist or not? We can move on from that. I'm, I'm kind of, that conversation was being had in 2005 when I first got there. 16 years later, I think it's, I think enough is enough and we should move past that and focus on the institution itself. It's a fascinating question because there is a group of people who are looking at this and understanding that this could be deemed a racist or oppressive mascot. Then there's another group of people who are looking at this and saying, what are you talking about? No clue whatsoever. Like they just cannot wrap their, their brains around that. It doesn't offend me. So why would it offend anybody else? Um, what did you, when, when you got to Valpo and you, and you put the football jersey on for the first time, said Crusaders across the chest on it. Um, did you, did you ever think about that? And, and, and I say this as, you came from a high school that you played, you were the Wildcats. So kind of a benign run of the mill mascot, no offense to your high school. No. But uh, just, you know, what was, did you, did you have any impressions from the jump when you were an 18 year old coming to Valpo in 2005? So when I first got there, we actually didn't wear the Crusader across the chest. We had switched to that cartoon kind of drawing and we just had the logo. And to be honest with you, I didn't even really know we were the Crusaders. Um, I strictly knew Valpo because of Bryce Drew and the tournament run. Um, and, and you know, this might be embarrassing to admit, I didn't know it was a Lutheran college until my grandfather's funeral um, after my high school graduation or just before my high school graduation, he, he was Lutheran and the pastor said, you know, Raymond's grandson's going to a Lutheran college. And I looked at my parents and said, I had no idea. Um, so <laughs> I didn't think about it. And then when I had heard talk initially, I had done a little bit of research and I had that same viewpoint. Well, it doesn't offend me. So I don't really understand how it could offend anybody else. And I was for keeping the crusader when I first got there because I didn't, I didn't know any better. I didn't know anything around it. I had only heard kind of the positive connotations and the defense that you often hear about a crusader isn't the, the warrior. It's the person that carries out the mission of Christ. So I was like, okay, well, that makes sense. And then I shut it away because I didn't have to think about it because it didn't offend me. I was never really confronted with any sort of uh, pain the imagery may, may represent. Um, so I, I didn't think about it. And we basically eliminated, I was going through, I, funny you asked today, we're cleaning out our house because we're getting ready to move. And I found some old gear of mine and none of it had the Crusader logo, even the logo, it all said Valpo football. And and that to me was what I was representing was Valpo. It was all our jumpsuits or I'm wearing the polo shirt right now. It says Valpo with the shield, our helmet said Valpo. So the Crusader didn't mean didn't mean that much to me, Valpo did, and still does. Yeah, um, you're seeing a lot, we're seeing a lot of, uh, of people coming forward in talking about how, you know, when they, when they played, they played for the Crusaders. Um, your thoughts when you hear that, when you hear kind of the, the, the I'm, you know, I'm gonna ride or die with the Crusaders because that's who I strapped it up for for four years. You know, I, I understand that viewpoint, but I think we have to go a little bit more in depth. The Crusader is simply a word or a picture that represents a bunch of things. So when you say you play for the Crusaders, it means you played for your teammates. It play, you played for your institution, your coaches, 
your family, yourself. And crusaders is just a word, in my opinion, that encapsulates all of those things. That word can be changed. And you know, you're a newspaper guy yourself. Uh, the mascot itself was created by newspapers as a way to reference opposing teams. And it was actually created to make fun of opposing teams. And then they kind of em embraced it. Mascots were nicknames that were given to encapsulate a bunch of different feelings. So I didn't play for the Crusaders. Uh, and that, that is just symbolism. I played for Valpo. Valparaiso, the mission statement, the good of the, the university, my teammates, my, you know, Coach Taylor, who put his reputation on the line to recruit me, you know, even though I didn't live up to his expectations, like I played for everybody. And, and I, I will say this, I, I saw a lot of posts online about, you know, I gave my body for Valpo, I gave my body for the Crusaders, so did I, you know, even though I wasn't a very good football player, I had so many surgeries there and I have chronic pain that I still carry with me that I have to constantly get checked out by my employer because of the nature of my employment. So I left it out on the line too, but I didn't do it for the Crusaders. You could call me anything. You you know, you could call me the a colonel or whatever I saw going around or a flame. That or a seems colonel. to be the name that people love right now, the Valparaiso colonels. Yeah, call me whatever you want. But the, the, word, the fact of the matter is, is the word is just a simple representation. And if you change the word, it doesn't take away me playing for my family, me playing for myself, me playing for the institution, changing the mascot doesn't take away for what Valpo really is. In I fact, say, if I may expand on that very briefly, I think keeping the mascot goes counterintuitive to what Valpo really is. I want to say one thing really quick. You're knocking your football ability. Uh, offensive team scout player of the week when you were a sophomore, actually a registered freshman, I think special teams player of the week uh, for the team when you were a sophomore. Pioneer Football League academic honor roll all four years, I think. So uh, I, I don't know that you need to be knocking your ability, right? Um, you are also the long snapper, which is a position that most people don't pay attention to. So I don't know that you can get stats that show, although you did have two tackles in a game against Dayton from your hometown of Ohio, or your home, home state of Ohio. So, um, <laughs> well, thank you, you for were, talking. Me. <laughs> what's that? Well, thank you for talking me up. You know, I had to go deep into the archives to find to find this. I bet you, um, you know, you work in law enforcement. You you put on a a logo every day, right? And, and just talk to me about maybe what those logos mean, as opposed to you know the, a, a team name or something like that. Of course, and I'm really glad you asked me this because I think. This gives me a little bit deeper perspective. Um, so for those who are listening, who may think like, okay, the mascot doesn't mean anything to him. Symbolism doesn't mean anything to him and kind of discount my take. This is where I would disagree. I put on a badge every day and this badge means so much to everybody. Like this badge is recognizable. I've used it in cases where I've rescued um, kidnapping victims, for instance. And the badge was what I handed them to let them know that they were safe. And I have two-year-old kids playing with the badge. And so it represents safety. It represents freedoms in this country. It represents civil rights to a lot of people. It represents um, defense of the nation. Um, to me, it represents the people that I went through the academies with, it represents the uh, coworkers that I've had that were killed in the line of duty. It represents so much. Um, and so I, I know what it's like to have a symbol that you are behind and, and we wear it. Um, so we're quite literally behind it. But that being said, our, ba our badge has changed over the course of our existence um, for one reason or another. And if somebody came to me and said, hey, a white supremacist group is co-opting your agency's badge or a portion of your badge, we're going to have to redo it a little bit. I would be the first one to turn in my badge because that badge, again, is just a way to symbolize a bunch of different things. It symbolizes those who came before us. It symbolizes the oath that I take to the Constitution. It symbolizes my agency's um, desire to fight our foreign uh, enemies and domestic enemies like it, it represents a lot but it's just I I don't put my literal life on the line every day for a piece of metal I put my literal life on the line for a set of ideals that makes makes this nation great and I translate that to Valpo I didn't put my body on the line for the crusader mascot I put my body on the line for a university that I firmly believe in and I still do I still represent Valpo every day every day that I can um, and and there's actually a good, uh, we'll sh I'll share this offline. There's a, a work picture of me that made its way into the newspaper. And it's hard to tell this, but if you zoom in, I'm wearing my Valpo hat uh, because I knew that there would be press involved. And I wanted people to know that I went to Valpo. I'm proud of it. Well, we appreciate that. Um, I, you know, I got to ask you this. You played football in the 
48, 96, 72, whatever many hours since this came down, I'm seeing a lot of um, a lot of takes from a lot of different athletes, but the strongest seem to be coming from football. Is that because you guys sang the fight song after every game? It 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 feels like the mascot of any school, high school, college, anything like that has always been just a little bit more with football than anything else. Is that a fair thing to say? I, I think, I think it's fair. I, I wouldn't say about the fight song. Cause if you, you can break down our fight song at the end of it, we say we fight for the Brown and gold. We don't say we fight for the crusaders. Well, uh, the first words of the song are hail crusaders. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. But again, you know, we're, we're paying homage to the crusader, right. Or, or the word that, that exemplifies what Valpo is, but we are fighting for the Brown and gold. We're fighting for the colors. I I've, I've seen the same takes um, from many of my ex teammates and I don't want to discount any of their feelings. Um, you know, a lot of them put more than I did on the line and a lot of them did, didn't. I mean, but I think at Valparaiso, I noticed football does, we put a lot in, we, we put our bodies, we go through a lot, right? We, a lot of injuries, a lot of rehab. And I think when I was there, I felt the sense that, you know, Valpo football didn't really have a say in a lot of things because we were the stepchild of the university for, for obvious reasons. We weren't a revenue driver like basketball is, um, nor do we ever, uh, you know, will we ever be that? Um, we don't have that national stage. And so I think what you're seeing is people who are, are pissed off because they, again, didn't have a say. Um, but I mean, the way I look at it is what, what do we have to say? We already put our time in at Valpo. We, we were crusaders. We played under the crusader mascot. The time is for the new generation of football players, the new generation of basketball players. I saw an interesting quote from Matt Lottick last night, I think that you put out that he said that most of his players didn't even know they were the Crusaders. If the university, if the students there are telling you that it makes them uncomfortable, that they don't like it, they want to change it, they're the ones that are currently wearing that that shield. Um, and so we, we should listen to them. Um, but I think to, to go back to your question, I think football players, um, we just tend to feel... Uh, not heard by the university, you know, like we have the, we had the worst weight room, the worst press offices. It, we had to move mountains to get a, a field that wasn't covered in mud. So I, I recognize that and, and he, people feel slighted like they weren't asked, but I bet you, Paul, I bet you if you asked all the football alumni to go through their emails right around January 12th and find the, the, the uh, survey, many of them would. And if they don't, it's because they haven't been keeping their email addresses active with the alumni association. And that's interesting because that is a big point of contention from a lot of people that I'm seeing is that they didn't get this survey. You're saying you got the survey. I did January 12th. And I know it's only a month, but I mean, let's be honest, this has been years, like decades worth of conversation. And if, if they felt that strongly about it, well, two things, like quite frankly, I, I'm a big perspective guy. What does my input have anything to do with what students do there now? I don't donate nearly enough money to make any sort of difference in the university. My name is one of thousands of football players that came through there, thousands of alumni. You know, the best that I can do is represent the organization here forward. But what does my say really mean all that much? And for all of my, my teammates, I ask you the same thing. Like, why do you feel that your opinion means more than the current students, the ones who are actively representing our university on a day-to-day -day basis? You know, guys like... Um, uh, Daniel Saki, right? The, the basketball player. Did I get his name right? Yep. A yep. Great player, has been there a long time, great representative of the university. His opinion matters more than mine because he is wearing that jersey every single day on a national stage. And if he's uncomfortable with it, and, and I'm not saying he is, I don't know. I had never I haven't talked to the guy, but that's who we should be thinking about. And and I'd like to see this one more piece because this piece, and I don't know if it'll come up in the questions, so I want to make sure that I get it out uh, regarding the, the the white supremacy angle of, of the crusader. So in the video, I watched the full YouTube video that the interim president put out. She references the KKK has co-opted the Crusader and even named a newspaper out of it. So for all my all the people out there who are saying, well, we should go and defend that, we should take that name back, it's too late. And this is where my professional experience takes over. Imaging matters to these far-right groups, domestic terror groups, even foreign uh, terrorism groups all over the, over the world. Imaging matters. And when they co-opt that symbol, whatever it is, whether it's the laurel leaves, whether it's the 3% sign, whether it's the tiki torches, um, whatever it may be, you've lost. The conversation is done because people aren't going to ask you 
they're going to see the imagery. They're going to hear that the Crusader is a, a KKK newspaper. And they're not going to ask about Prairie University. Well, tell me why it's not racist. Because we as a society don't do that much research, and nor should the onus be on them. If Valpo keeps the Crusader knowing that the KKK has co-opted that, they grant legitimacy to it. And what I mean by that is now you have you run the risk of people who are active members of the KKK who subscribe to the Crusader newspaper may buy a Valpo t-shirt because it says Crusader on it and wear it to a rally. Do you, does Valpo, do, do I want that? Absolutely not. Do I want to see that? Absolutely not. This is not a cancel culture. This isn't people getting offended. This is of we need to distance ourselves from something that has been that for whatever reason, an organization that is rooted in hate finds so much common ground with delegitimize it and get run away from it as fast as possible because it's it is just a mascot um but right now it's rooted in in hate and rooted in white supremacy and in 2021 there's no place for it and chris again as someone who works in law enforcement you are i, I would say that you are much more connected to that world than i am and uh, and i appreciate all of the input um, I'll, I'll wrap with this, uh, you know, your, your, your take on Valpo football right now. Have you had a chance to meet the, the relatively new coach and have you been back at all? I know that again, you're very busy with all your professional stuff, but, but, uh, your thoughts on, on, I almost said your thoughts on the Crusaders, uh, but your, <laughs> your thoughts on, uh, on Valpo. On the Valpo football team. Um, I, you know what, I've had a, a couple opportunities to zoom in with, uh, coach Fox. I think he's fantastic. Um, in, in the time that I haven't been there, I haven't seen a, a coach with such um, mission focused. It's almost like talking to a coworker of mine or a boss of mine, laying out the vision of the program. And he keeps alumni incredibly involved. Um, he, he values our opinions uh, more than anybody. And for that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm grateful, even though I say my opinion doesn't really matter. If it, if it can help, then I'll, I'll gladly give it. Um, I think the quality of recruits, you know, I, I keep up with the recruiting classes. There's no way in hell I, I would set foot on that that field if I played today. I mean, those guys are unbelievable. We're getting state champion quarterbacks and kids out of Cincinnati that I saw that you know play in the big time division. So I think they're I think they're in, doing a hell of a job. Um, I haven't been able to catch a game in a long, long time. We were supposed to go check out Maris this year because I live outside of New York now, um, but obviously the pandemic kind of ruined those plans. But I'd love to. I'd love to take my boys and let them run around the field and see. The Crusaders. I saw them play in San Diego twice. I actually saw the Hail Mary that beat us a few years ago. Oh man, gut wrenching. Yeah. Well, hey, Chris, thank you so much. Uh, very, very kind of interesting and in, 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 uh, involved take here. And, and obviously, those who are listening to the podcast are going to hear from from all sides. But uh, I, I think that uh, you had some really good stuff to say, and I appreciate you taking the time to to reach out. Of course. And if I may wrap up by saying, I, I don't, I don't want my take to come off as if I know everything. This is my personal and professional experience, things that I've seen regarding symbolisms, how I view the Valpo symbolism. I don't want to take away from anybody's feelings on this. Uh, I don't claim to be a know-it-all in this in this field, but I'm glad that you're taking the time to hear all sides. And I hope, um, I hope cool heads prevail and we can move forward and the conversation can be about Valparaiso University and not the Crusader. Do you have a final question, actually? Do you have a, uh, do you have a nickname, a, a mascot that you'd roll with? You know, I saw somebody put up the Valpo gold, and I think that's awesome because I love the symbolism of the torch. And we're talking about lighting uh, the path forward and, and carrying the torch for Christ and all the things that we stand for as a university. I think that'd be awesome, but but I don't. Um, but I can promise you one thing, whether it's kernels, which, you know, I'm a little lukewarm on, or gold or anywhere in between, I, I will gladly wear that mascot and support it. Very good. Chris, thank you very much. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thrilled to be joined now by Kyle Padgett, Pioneer Football League champion, with the Valparaiso football team, Kyle went to Valpo from 2001 to 2005, I believe. Is that correct? Yep, yeah. yeah, that is it. You were a freshman when I was a senior. And I, I remember I traveled with your football team a lot that year. And I thought that the, here's a group with a bunch of seniors. It's gonna, they're going to come together. And then I watched you, Ross, Bill Marshall, all these freshmen come in and, and make their claim to the team. And uh, it paid off a couple of years later when you guys won the, the PFL championship. Um, it's great to see you, you know, and um, what's, what's the last week been like with, with just, uh, just your, your thoughts of, of you're a football coach now, but now you're all the monitor kind of being back on top of your mind over the last couple, last couple of days. Well, it, um, it, it's been interesting because it's one of those things where you kind of knew it was on the horizon, knew it was a possibility. Um, 
hadn't really thought about how I would feel. I haven't, I wasn't sitting there thinking like, oh, if they make this change, I'm going to be angry. Um, I didn't really experience the emotions and I would, angry is not the emotion I, I want to use, but I hadn't really experienced or knew what I was going to experience until it happened. And honestly, um, being from Valpo, one of the people that wears it proudly, um, you know, I'm the head football coach in a small community. Everyone in that community knows I believe Valpo. So I, I, I was getting bombarded with, um, you know, questions and texts and emails and like, whoa, what's this? What's going on? And it's one of those things where, um, you know, my wife's, our, the due date for our third child's four days away. So at the time I was worried about the incoming snowstorm and <laughs> making sure <laughs> we're not, I'm not traveling through a blizzard to the hospital, but in the same sense, you know, I'm sitting there and, and watched it and uh, she brings up, hey, uh, do you want to get the Valpo um, onesie for the kid? Because that's what we take our firstborn pictures in. Um, and I was like, yeah. And I get it out and it says Crusader on it. And I'm just like, man, it says, uh, so, you know, it, it, as I had time to think about it more and more, um, you know, I was a, a little upset, but my, my anger is not, uh, as I kind of voiced to you in, in our previous, um, in my tweets and stuff, is my anger is not so much about the name changes, it's about um, <clears throat> the football program. Um, our alumni group on Facebook has, and, and don't quote me, but it's over 300 members, I know, yeah. um, around 350, and it's very active. I want, to, I, want to, I want to take a pause for a second because I want to say one thing that I think the audience should know. I just Googled your name not too long ago because I was trying to find like the years you were at. And I found an article that we wrote on the Northwest Indiana Times from 2014 of when you guys did the North South All Star game. Yeah. And, uh, Stacey Adams was there and yeah. Erod was there. Yep, yep. And I want to, uh, I just want to read um, a quote from you really okay. quick because I think this is important um, to just so people understand uh, you said that was the best time of my life I'm proud to say I played Valparaiso University football uh, there's something about the pedigree that ties us together you said later on uh, you, they, they asked you the reporters asked you about Dave Cicchini at the time and you said I'm very invested in seeing it turned around I was part of the alumni group that tried to get some changes I want to see it be successful a lot of alumni want to help so when people wonder why am I talking to Kyle Padgett right now or if you're frustrated or angry or anything like that and people are like well who is this guy I just I wanted to say before you said anything else that you're a guy who has walked the walk and talked the talk when it comes to um your involvement post graduation with Valpo, yeah. and 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 your input means a lot, and it should mean a lot because you have been part of this for a long time. That's wanted and has had your voice heard in the past. So I didn't want to really cut you off there, but I, I just no, wanted fine. the audience to understand that you're a guy who, when you speak, people have listened in the past, and it sounds like you maybe didn't get a chance to speak this time around. Well, yeah, which is what I was alluding to. Um, our football alumni group is very active, over 300 plus members. Um, uh, it's a Facebook group that has many smaller sects using WhatsApp and, um, and things like that to communicate to um, organize a lot of events. Anytime there's a fundraiser going for the football program or even the university, it's communicated through there. Um, we actively try to make sure we are supporting our alma mater. And uh, when the survey came out, uh, Randy Fisher, who kind of heads a group, he's a great guy. Um, he put that out there and he said, you know, it was like, hey, if you want to make sure um, your voice is heard, take the survey, blah, blah, blah. And, and I'd be one to, I know, um, I can't quote how many, but I know hundreds of people in that group um, took the survey. Um, at that point in time, some people were already um, upset that this was even a thing. And, and it, so in doing so, I can tell you that that group of football players, of football alumni, um, which I'm not saying we're the most important alumni, but I could tell you that that group was very passionate about this. Um, and I don't know of one person in that group personally, um, and if they did, they didn't voice it, but that voted to get rid of the Crusader. We felt that we were doing something that would let our voices be heard and, uh, and let the university know how we felt about it. So part of my displeasure comes from just, it, you know, here we are cruising along and like you said, and many other st staff members I'm still in contact with, no one even had a clue this was coming. It kind of just popped out of nowhere. Um, we were told that there were former athletes and alumni um, on this task force. Uh, I, 
no one could figure out who those athletes were. And I've spoken to people that know people on the task force. And it, to me, it appears, and I'm not quoting that I know exactly who it was, but I were there, was there a former football player at all on this task force? Were there any former athletes um, from having at least 10 years or longer ago on this task force? Um, because honestly, the Valpo, the Crusaders have been kind of branded out. Um, the, the shirt I got for Christmas this year from my mother-in-law um, has the V on it. She couldn't. And then she said, looking back, she goes, you know, I don't know if I saw anything with the Crusader on it. But um, that being said, the, the tra lack of transparency from the university, how this was just popped, you know, I found out from an ESPN alert um, before I'd even, made, I hadn't checked my email, um, yeah. but the, the ESPN alert came out 22 minutes after an email I received. So <laughs> this just kind of came out of nowhere. Um, and speaking from the football player standpoint is we are very passionate. We are the people constantly organizing things in different cities um, and not just about football, but about Valpo in general. Um, and we really felt like we weren't, our voices weren't heard at all in this process. Um, I want to ask this, um, you know, I, it, it's interesting. I'm an, I'm a graduate of Valpo, just like you are. We, I, I see right behind your head, you've got your Valpo uh, yeah. diploma on the wall. I have mine yeah. right behind there. Um, yeah. I, I was a non-athlete. But I also spent a lot of my time traveling with the teams, broadcasting. So I was, I was as close to the programs without being an athlete. There does seem to be some frustration about the fact that it was people who are way on the other side, non-athletes, um, be it someone in the student senate, anything like that, um, who have been pushing for this change, not necessarily the athletes pushing for this change. Is there a disconnect right there between, I mean, do, and, not that you know people can't have opinions or whatever, but does should the opinion of the athletes matter at least on the same level, if not more, because they're the ones who are putting that jersey on when they go out there? Well, and you know, I don't know if our opinions should matter more, but our opinions should definitely be heard and felt. Um, and it, as I put out in my tweets, when you wear that name on your chest for four years, when you sing the fight song that starts out with the words "Hail Crusaders," it's going to mean more. And I sang that fight song hundreds of times. I sang that fight song as I held up a trophy and, and won rings. And the, the word, so Hail Crusaders still, I, I mean, I have it taped up in my um, office at um, my, my school. Uh, it rings true. Um, every tweet after every sport, not just football, but after basketball, if you go to my Twitter, I say Hail Crusaders with a retweet on almost every time you post a score. <laughs> you know, because I'm, I'm checking, that, watching, lot, yes. following. It, it matters. It means something. And to me, where I believe the athletes felt slighted in this with all, not just football players, athletes I spoke to, though, is there's always been a disconnect on campus when I was there. Um, and, you know, and I did grad school there as well. There's always been a disconnect on campus, in my opinion, between the students and the athletes. The athletes hang out together, the students hang together. Doesn't mean we weren't friends with non athletes or anything, but um, <clears throat> they're definitely was different views and values um, as far as to what should be, what the campus should be doing and allocating its resources to and this and that. And in this matter, there was definitely fewer, less athlete involvement in this decision, um, which to me is a major, major decision. And that's what, when people say, it's just a mascot, why are you upset? Well, <laughs> this mascot's on everything I own from Valpo, from the things that matter to me, this mascot's tied up in every memory I have of Valpo of all of the great memories and bad memories and everything um, as an athlete and as a student. So it's, uh, to me, it's not something that can just be taken lightly. And the, as I stated earlier, the, the feeling that your university basically just swept anything that you felt or accomplished and not just me in my generation, but 80 plus years, uh, ah, we're moving on. This is offensive to some people. Um, without our voices being heard is what really hurt. And as I start my tweet out with, um, it, and this is offensive to some people, but I'm just exhausted from being told how I'm supposed to feel and for being told why I need to feel that way. I can have an emotional tie to this name and not have to feel bad about it. And that's just simply, I didn't need, we didn't need him to make a change, but we needed to at least hear our voice and acknowledge that it was said because it's obvious from this process and the lack of transparency and the results of the survey and everything else that our, our voices were not heard. Um, what is, 
is is football i i ask this of somebody else too just because the fight song is what it is and it feels like i've always felt in the 20 years i've been around that football has embraced the school spirit aspect of it and i actually think part of that is football is asked to embrace the school spirit more homecoming weekend is a football event right yeah I mean, it's, it's geared around it's geared around football like i always kind of thought basketball and, and and i didn't even notice this i didn't realize this apparently basketball hasn't had crusaders on their jerseys for several years now i just i don't pay attention to that yeah um, but football did and and i know this predates you a little bit but you know they have the hoosier helmet and uh with butler i know the rivalry with butler doesn't predate you and i know you live yeah. in so the rivalry is a big deal to you oh yeah um absolutely but it always kind of felt like football maybe kind of carried the water for the school spirit side of things and therefore would have more of a tie to the crusader nickname than say basketball or any other sport absolutely um and it kind of goes to um i read your interchange with tom Byrne, um a teammate of mine on facebook i think tom put it very well there and you know the football players come in were non-scholarship athletes um, just to even play football, Valpo is saying that you're a top 25% student athlete in your high school and you're willing to come pay to play. Now, there's obviously other things that can occur academically and financial aid wise where you're not paying full tuition. But the, the football players from the time they get there kind of have a chip on their shoulder because they're, they're non-scholarship athletes. Um, football has in the past felt slighted from the, um, the athletic pro, um program as a whole um, kind of seemed like the, the stepbrother of the program, if you will. Yeah, uh, the evil step kid. Um, so I just think there is a little more pride with it because we had this, it, you know, all us all in attitude about everything we did. And often we're overcoming adversity on the field and off the field. And the Crusader meant a lot to us because we identified with the meaning of the Crusader as we knew it as someone, um, you know, out fighting for something uh, that, that's worth fighting for uh, to make a change, uh, the social justice type deal, deals. Um, I remember the the fight song. Um, the first thing you learn when you come in that very first day is you you have to learn the fight song, and it's not a hazing ritual. It's you're you're given the words to the fight song, and you learn it and you sing it together with the team. And from that moment forth, you sing it um, during two days every day at lunch. You'd sing it as a team before you walked out to that second practice. Um, and the fight song for all those things you mentioned and, and I just mentioned, I, I do believe it means a lot more to the football team. As you said, it was on our chest, it was on everything we did. Um, and like you said, I didn't even realize until, and as I mentioned earlier, yeah, it's not on basically anything for basketball. Um, it's kind of like how basketball went to more black and yellow colors when we were still stuck wearing the brown and, uh, and yellow. And it, I, I remember us being told we couldn't use black in the football program, but the, the basketball team is out there wearing black uniforms and we're like, what, what is that? Yeah. Um, that, that's, no, you know, just another instance of us feeling slighted as a football program all these years. Also, I think is why as alumni, we all still back the football program because we want it to be better than it was when we left it, and we continue to be a part of it. And in doing so, it feels like our university continues to alienate us. For as, as many hurdles as the football team has faced really since you guys won um yeah i mean it kind of started a couple of five and six four and seven years and then it just yeah. torpedoed um i gotta tell you though at homecoming i mean i've seen you back a dozen times in the last 15 years or so you talk about randy fisher randy and i get together every year at homecoming and uh yeah I mean, mainly because he's always got a great spread and i like to go hang out uh, at halftime, yeah, right? yeah. his trailer, and uh, you know, it's um, it, it it's interesting because I I think I think there's some validity to a lot of what you're saying in terms of the um, I mean, you guys you guys didn't get paid to go play, at, you know, you weren't scholarship athletes, and I'm really not trying to make this a football versus all the other sports because there are plenty of other sports who, I mean, I wouldn't even know where they turn the lights on, cross country, yeah. track, yeah. Um, swimming, things like that. Um, but it's tough. Um, I, you know, I, I, I could, could go in a couple different directions here. It's, what, what, is there any way to, to, to come out of this on the other side? I mean, is, is there a nickname or a mascot or anything like that, that, I mean, is how, how can maybe Valpo pay tribute 
to the past, but or or is that ship kind of sailed? Uh, and that's I text um, Jamie Stengel right away when this happened and told her I was worried because I I know how many of my buddies feel about this on the, that former alumni uh, football alumni and and guys in that chat and I'm worried about the the funding that could occur the the lack of fundraising that might come from our end because this will alienate some people. And I was like, we've got to find a way to bridge this um, this gap that was just created by this change. And and I'm legitimately worried about it because I know our alumni help almost completely fund the, the new lockers that they received in the locker. I and mean, we do a lot financially for the program. Um, and I just think it's important as a high school football coach, you have to build a, you know, a lineage and legacy. And that's all part of your alumni and guys that that wore that name on the on their chest in the past, and we've got to stay involved if we're going to get this going the right way, um, which means a lot to me. And I'm worried about what will happen. And, and <clears throat> my personal opinion on the matter was: let's if we're losing the Crusader, that's fine, but let, let's stay Valpo. I don't want something corny. Don't become the Valpo Vipers or something silly. I don't know, you know. Um, or if it would was going to be something, something that you know that. I would not even, I not even joke. And I love the Drew family and Homer Drew is one of the nicest people are Valpo homers, Valpo colonels, something that, that people can relate with that have been there. Um, but I just don't want to end up with some generic thing that has no tie to anything. Um, would, um, let me ask you this, would moving away from Brown and gold be a, a big slap in the face or is it, or, or, or are the colors so repulsive? You say, let's, let's do something. You different. nailed it on the head. The first thing I said to her, I said, well, if we're getting rid of the crusader, let's change the colors. And I would totally be okay with that. Cause, um, cause it almost, it, it's, it's a catch 22. I feel like yeah. if you are moving away from the name yet. So I think about this with the Washington football team, formerly the Redskins. Yeah. If they come up with a new name and they keep the yellow and red or whatever the yellow and maroon, like, what are we doing here? Like, let's yeah, do something exactly. completely different, you know? Yeah. And and I, I just I that's just me because I think I always think to myself like, why did Washington wait so long? They're going to make a million dollars by by selling new jerseys if they get a quarterback and they're worth a damn. I think they're going to yeah. be they're going to be exciting. Um, I mean, I think for Valpo. I mean, the number one thing, and, and, and I'm not trying to put him on blast here, uh, but Alec Peters, the former Valpo men's basketball player, oh, yeah. I tried to, I tried to, he messaged me right away and I tried to get him, I wanted to get him fired up because I know that Alec, yeah. once he gets going, he, he, he can be yeah. fun. And he kind of bowed out of it. He said, just the only thing is you better get a good color scheme in there. Yeah. And, and I wonder if, if they kept brown and gold, but moved away from the Crusaders, would that be a bigger slap in the face than just doing a whole complete rebrand um you know that's i've i've changed i've flip-flopped on it over and over and over and i've had a lot of um buddies offer up some very good ideas um some stuff flying around in our football chat um and, you know and some guys are saying keep the brown and gold um and just be valpo um or let's just completely rebrand it uh and and see what happens and see if they can find some because at this point the people that are still engaged that weren't, you know, that we're still in with Valpo. Um, we just want to make sure we, we don't completely sink the ship. We got to recover from this. Um, you know, I'm, I'm assuming they did this thinking this would help us with future crusaders. Um, so now what can we do to keep our former crusaders engaged and involved? Um, and one thing I can tell you, having been in administration, um, at a Catholic school in Indianapolis, uh, your your former um, crusaders or former alumni honestly make you a lot more money than your future alumni. Uh, and so I, to me, I think that's the biggest question facing the university. And I, I, I just, this is a bigger, I think, I think they knew that this was big, um, but I, I'm not sure that the current administration grasped how much this could really hurt um, their future donations down the road from alumni. I mean, I I can tell you right now, and I'm not exaggerating here. I've talked to well over a hundred people I know that are Valpo graduates that are completely incensed by this and are claiming they'll have nothing to do with the university in the future. I'm I'm hoping and praying that that you know the they'll cool off as time. Hell, maybe this blizzard that's hitting us will help. Um, 
But, you know, you know, I, I'm not going to, I'd be lying if I said I didn't have a day where I was like, man, I'm just done with it. And for me, it was all about everyone that weren't crusaders from the outside that were like, man, what is going on? Why cancel culture this and woke mob this and all this and that. And to me, I never want to fall into that trap. And I'll be truthfully honest with you. Uh, <clears throat> one of the things I did was uh, I, uh, I put that tweet out that's had like, I don't know, 50,000 engagements or whatever. Um, just kind of voice what I felt. And uh, I kind of got <laughs> some backlash from some of the current Valpo students that wanted this done. And uh, as a teacher and coach, I constantly preach empathy and compassion. And I think in our current political climate in the United States that this is what our country needs. And I actually messaged um, Caitlin, uh, the student body president. I, I sent her a, a message on Twitter and just basically told her that, you know, while I didn't agree with what she did, I um, appreciated her bravery in doing it. I'm sure she was getting much more uh, coming her way than she could have ever imagined by being the Valpo student body president. Um, and that, you know, I, I hope that this does work out and that um, we'll look back years from now and see it was a great decision and this and that. And I just told her I appreciated her being brave enough to go out on a limb and, and make this leap. If this is truly what the current staff and students think is going to make us a better place, then as an alumni, I got to support that because no matter what the decision was made and I want to support my university. So that, that's where I got to, that's where I got to live. And, um, I, well, and I, and I, I think, you know, it's one of the reasons why I brought you on is because I, you know, I knew that you'd approach this thoughtfully and, and not that there isn't, I, I'm trying to track down some people who are on that other side that are basically saying, uh, uh, I don't want anything to do with this place ever again. Well, I can give you a list. <laughs> I'm sure you can. I'm sure you can. Um, and it's interesting because I think a lot of those people will say that. And then, you know, I, does anyone really want to say, I mean, I'm, I'm, again, I'm sure they're not hard to find, right? Yeah. Uh, it, it is interesting. I said this earlier in the, in the podcast. Um, I, you know, I, I, I think it's very big of you to reach out to Caitlin the way I know Caitlin a little bit. And uh, I think it's really big of you to do that um, because I know that she's catching all holy hell from all sides. Oh, yeah. I, if, I, if I'm the university, I'm not sure that I would have trotted out the student body president. I felt awful there. for it. I felt yeah. awful for it. I thought that was. A, I'm sure it's a. I felt the same way, Paul. I don't know why they. She's brave. And I yeah, very, her. very brave. Um, you could almost say a crusader. Hey, um, hey, hey, don't go there. Kyle, thank you very much. Uh, it was a pleasure and congratulations on impending baby number three. That's awesome. And thank so, you. Oh, yeah. So let's uh, let's get that onesie on there. And uh, yeah, I'll send pictures out for you. Absolutely. So, Kyle, thank you very much. Um, you know, we can't wait to see you next homecoming if you come back. So. You got it. I appreciate it, Paul. It's good talking to you, buddy.